the last stitch looks a little funky because we're slipping stitches. So I'm going to slip my stitch. I'm going to bring my yarn to the back. Nope. Hello, everybody. I'm Rebecca from Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, and this is another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. So I made a couple of videos last week that were all about that's my cat. He likes to mess with things around me. <laughs> I made a couple of videos that were about the red and the orange squares on my Papillon. Papillon shawl, super fun to make. It's these bubbles on it. And I got a question. I got a couple of questions actually. I got a question about how to have the yarn go up the sides so that we don't have to cut them. And that's these guys right here on this edge. It only, you only have to worry about it on one edge. And I also had questions about the other squares, which are red and, oh, no, red and orange, we already did. <laughs> Whew, long day. Blue and green. Now, with this guy, I am both nowhere near a blue or a green square. And I'm also nowhere near a section where I would have to carry the yarn on the edge. So I'm gonna show you with some really big yarn how I carry yarn on the edge and hopefully give you a close-up of what I just held up so you can see it, all right? Let's get to it. Okay, here's my best attempt to diagram some of what's happening in the Papillon shawl. Now, none of this looks like the actual Papillon pattern. There's increases, there's other things, but I'm trying to represent down here when you knit over and back with the black, you do a thin stripe of black, we've got our little knit stitches. There's the front side of one knit stitch and then the back side of two knit rows. What you tend to be able to see when you look at your work is you'll see those what I call pearl bumps or turtlenecks or the back side of the knit stitches when you turn around to do your next set of two rows. So two rows of black over and back. And this side of the work, when you go to switch, you just lift the orange yarn, your main color, up and you start going across and back with that one. Now on a lot of the rows, when you get to your next row with the contrasting color, you can just pick your yarn up from where it was and it will float along the side or you can even hide it in the back. If you're slipping the first stitch of your row, you can often hide it in the back and I will show you that. Like I said, there's also increases. We're not dealing with them now. I can show them to you when we do the piece. Now this section in here is where we start to have some difficulty. If we pick up the orange and just start knitting with it and doing a lot of short rows on the end, as the pattern might it tells you to do, if we just leave the black yarn down here and go ahead and do our rows, so I go over and back, over and back, do a little short row in there, then over and back, little short row, over and back, short row, over and back. And I get to the end, and my orange yarn is up here. If I've done nothing with it, then this black yarn, I have to pick up and take all the way up here, and it is going to hang loose and look crazy. So when Marin says to carry it up, Here's what we're going to do. We are not going to do all those rows without doing something. So we're going to go over and back, do two rows with our main color, which now has a little bit of black in it. <laughs> so two rows. And we're going to let the black float up and twist around the orange so we can keep going. 
and we're going to go over and back with our main color again two more rows and we're going to let the black twist around the yarn when it gets there two more rows oh let me keep my color straight here twist the black around the orange two rows and then the black can just come up and be ready to do its two rows that go like this and create that little bubble form that's the logistics but it's easier to show you how they actually twist so let's get to some yarn this will not be the yarn for my shawl but we'll let you see what's happening so this is the big thick yarn I have. I will use this instead of my black because it's dark. And I will use the oatmeal instead of my orange because it's light. All right, so here's my sample so far to hopefully make it look like the picture. We have a, uh, two rows of black of the contrasting color, my teal, two rows of the main color, and two more rows of the teal of my contrast color. Now the edge looks like this. I'm putting some other things in from the pattern on the actual physical demonstration. The edge looks like this because I'm slipping the first stitch. If I slip it on the way over, on the way back, it'll show up up higher than the rest of the work. So there's two things I do in this pattern when I'm just switching colors, which is what will happen on the first row of this. First, I'm going to slip my first stitch, which I always do purl-wise to give it a nice edge. Then I'm going to move the yarn to the back to knit. If I moved it around this way, I'm going to get weirdness. I want a nice edge. I need to move it between the stitches to the back. Next, there's an increase on the Papillon shawl. So I'm going to do my increase. I'm going to do a make one right, which is lifting this ladder here with your left needle and then I'm gonna twist let's see if I can show you what I'm doing get this yarn out of here here's my yarn from the row below try to keep my hands out of the way on the first one I really I could just bring it up or I could twist I think I'm gonna lay my main color over and pull up my other color so I'm keeping it all tucked way beyond this first stitch so again, this yarn blah, is off here. I've lifted my stitch. I can show you that again. To make one, I'm going to lift the strand between the stitches. And I'm going to go ahead and knit it. But I'm going to knit it with my main color. So that adds a stitch. And then I'm only going to go a few stitches in so I can do my wrap and turn and get back to the edge and show you how to carry the yarn. So this is good enough. Let's wrap and turn. Remember, my wrap and turn goes between the needles, slip the next stitch, take the yarn back between the needles to the back, slip that stitch back, bring the yarn back to the front, and turn. If I can get it all untangled, I turn. And I'm going to knit back to the other edge. If that wrap and turn wasn't very clear, check out my red square or orange square videos. They show it very clearly. All right, I've gotten to the end of the row. I'm gonna turn around to start my new row. I still have that weirdness there because that's what happens when we slip a stitch. It'll get easier here. Looks a little funky and a little loose. That's because of my slip stitches and my yarn is right here. So I'm going to slip this first stitch, bring my yarn to the back, but before I do my next increase, which it might tell me to do, I'm going to lock this yarn in place so it's not left way down here. So I'm going to bring it over the top of my yarn, my main color, and then pick up my main color. Again, it's over my main color. Then I'm going to 
pick up the stitch I want to increase in and I'm going to go ahead and knit a couple stitches. And then do my slip stitch forward, slip back, slip it back, forward, flip it around, knit back to the front. You can go either way with your twist. It might be smoother one direction than the other. You try it out. If I knit all the way back, Let's take a look at what's going on here. The yarn is riding up. It got locked in right there. If we turn back to start our next row, let me show you how to do it again. I'm gonna slip my first stitch purlwise, take my yarn to the back. Back here, I'm going to lift my contrasting color over my main yarn and then pick this up to go again. If it requires an increase, I'm going to lift my ladder, do my increase, and keep going. Wow, that guy fell off. That was fun. Now this will twist your yarn back here. You'll have to untwist it every once in a while. I think it's worth it. I'm gonna do a short row here. Over, slip it back, slip it back over, back to the front, flip. And knit to the end. Again, the last time I used my multicolor yarn was down here, my teal, and now it's up here. And I can always tug on it a little. I wouldn't tug too hard because then it might squish all the work you did. But take a look at that, nicely locked in. And I really think the key to that, I just experimented, the key to that is when you slip and you take your yarn to the back if you twist this way if you twist from the outside in towards the work it may not stay as nicely on the back as taking it from the inside over out towards the outside let me show you what it looks like if we do the opposite if we grab from the outside and flip over it still will be locked in place Let me knit a couple stitches and do a short row. And let me just tell you that I saw it peeking through to the front and I had to yank it to the back, my teal. See, it doesn't look quite as clean as these. It's got a twist. I can pull that up so it's not very noticeable. If you don't pull on it, it might be noticeable on the front. You can yank it, but that might not feel quite as clean. You might have to yank it in place to have it feel as clean as these. So go at, twisting from the inside to the outside edge of the work may give you the cleanest look. Now if I was gonna pick up my teal, again I slip, Move the yarn to the back. Get my increase in there. And now I can go this way, I can go that way. If I'm not twisting, I'm just picking it up and going. I'll go all the way across and back so you can see. Again, I've got twists back here, which I will undo later. Whenever it gets on my nerves, I will stop and do that.
there's a patch. If I came all the way back across, here's a patch where I have carried that yarn up. Let me show you on the shawl itself one more time. So here's my shawl so far. Having a lot of fun with these colors, let me tell you. And if we look at the two top edges, you can't really see which side. You only need to carry yarn on one side because you're always going across and back and then switching over here. So this should be the side where if I turn it over, you can see that black. Let me move this out of the way. You can see where I've carried the black yarn in here and in here. And it's a pretty neat twist. I may not have gone the super clean way I can show you, but it still hides pretty well. The other side, you don't have to worry about it. But if you really lock it down every row from a distance, no one's going to be able to tell which side you carried your yarn on. Well, <laughs> Whew. I certainly must say, doing it with that big, thick yarn presented some challenges versus doing it with the teeny tiny sock yarn that I absolutely love. The yarn was even thicker than what my assistant Liz has done a Papillon in, which is worsted weight. That was super jumbo weight, but you get the idea. So subscribe, share, ask me if you have more questions. Let me know if I can be of more assistance in terms of doing your Papillon. I will never have parts of the pattern on camera because I fully believe in supporting the pattern writer and she has written a wonderful pattern. So dive in, have the courage and the confidence. You can do it. And I hope to see you here next time. Let me know what you want to see and may you have joy and confidence in your crafting. You're hiding out over here, aren't you? Thanks for leaving me alone mostly.